yes, I do. In fact, more and more so, uh, partly because of Brexit, but also because um, as the world polarizes um, because of populist politics and also uh, an increasing sense of culture clash um, on a range of issues, I, I myself feel more and more European. I find that that identity transcends uh, national identity and, e and regional identity for me, but it also uh, is, I find it becomes more a sharper definition vis-a-vis uh, -vis other continents. As a British citizen, inevi that, that's inevitable, I think. Also, I've lived in Brussels now for 15 years, and uh, I feel very European among all the other Europeans who are here. Um, I feel a little bit Belgian, after being here for so long, um, but I but I feel very fundamentally European. So I think the experience of living and working in another EU country than your own, the experience of your own country leaving the European Union, um, and also, of course, um, the sense when I go to the United States that as American politics polarizes, um, I identify very strongly with European values, some of which, of course, are, are also held by quite a lot of Americans. There's no question that it was 1989. Um, I was at university in 1989, studying politics, philosophy and economics at Oxford. Uh, and I had spent my first year learning about the politics of the Soviet Union, amongst other things. Um, and for me, having grown up during the Cold War with a sense that there was no way I could travel to the East that was cut off, that um, uh, as a child growing up in Britain during the Cold War, um, Hungary and Czechoslovakia and Poland and countries like this were accessible only through their music and their literature um, and history books. They were not something that was immediately accessible in our lifetime. To have that open up in 1989 and be able to meet people from those countries and find the commonalities uh, was an incredibly exciting thing. And it was also, it, it instilled in me a fundamental belief that bad systems can change for the good. And I still have that belief, despite everything that's happened, even though I work for an organization which has been um, uh, a target of authoritarian, would-be authoritarian leaders in the region, um, even despite that later, those later developments, the, the fundamental experience of um, a really repressive regime opening up and people becoming free and people being able to uh, rediscover old identities and to reshape their identities and forge new ones for the future was an absolutely formative experience. And, I, and it was a fundamentally European one because the reuniting of Europe and the reintegration of European history, that we didn't have two parallel histories anymore, we had one integrated history after 1989, come what may, we will have an integrated history from now on. Uh, that was really formative too, that we are in fact one Europe. Yeah, the Brexit vote was pretty serious. It was a pretty bad one. Um, and even worse, what happened afterwards, the way it's been interpreted. And I think the 31st of October, if that's the date for Brexit, will be a really ghastly moment. Um, there have been some other pretty bad ones. Um, Russia invading Georgia, Russia invading Ukraine. These were really terrible moments. All because of the risk of escalation, and then later the risk of complacency and simply allowing that fait accompli by Moscow to continue, those were really ghastly moments. Uh, there has always been a, a residual fear from the early 1990s that uh, Russia might try to retake, uh, for example, the Baltic states and others. That hasn't ever happened and those countries joined NATO. Uh, but what happened in Georgia uh, and then in Ukraine um, and, and particularly the invention of hybrid warfare, I find very scary uh, because uh, it's something which has started, not only is it about territory, but it's something that has started to affect our societies. Yeah, I should mention among the bad moments also, my previous answer, um, the authoritarian turn in Turkey, and especially the arrest of um, and pretrial detention of Osman Kavala, um, these were really terrible things. That, and I worked on Turkey also in the commission, and so that was really dreadful. Mm -hmm. 
the enlargement in 2004 was huge, but that's no longer very recent. Um, yeah, actually, I think overcoming the, the name issue uh, for North Macedonia, that was very important. I worked on that issue for five years in the commission, and uh, it was a huge thing. Uh, that w looked completely insoluble and the fact that it was possible to do that gives hope that other um, seemingly frozen political uh, problems also for example Cyprus and, and other things like that might still be solved uh, so that was a that was a great moment giving me the freedom to study and live and work across all of the member states. That's just an incredible privilege. And it wasn't there when I was a child or when, even when I was a student. Um, and the fact that it's there now is just amazing. Um, travel without a passport across borders and the Schengen zone, that's also really good. But it's free movement. Because that's something that the European Union gave to me personally, not through my government, not to all of my um, not via um, some kind of um, gift to my nation or to my state, but to me personally. The one thing I would like the, most like the EU to have achieved by 2030 is a politically resilient, truly sustainable um, climate policy. That's, I think, the next huge challenge and the next huge opportunity for European integration because it is the, exactly the kind of transnational, long-term challenge that the European Union was set up to deal with. It is the successor of coal and steel as the big issue. Um, and I think that the climate politics are about to turn from being relatively benign to being really nasty. And so if the EU could have achieved by 2030 really serious climate action, which not only puts the EU into a sustainable, a transition to sustainable um, zero carbon, but also sets an example and encourages others to do the same, that would be a great achievement.